And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of MLB DFS Quick Hits, your Monday, April 5th edition. We've got a seven-game DraftKings main slate on tap for you tonight. If you're playing FanDuel, you should get about 10 games because I like to start an hour earlier than DraftKings. If you have any questions on those games, hit me up on Twitter at BDNTrick or in the Fantasy DGEN's free Slack chat. I'll be there taking care of business for you all day like usual. Also, if you uh, would like to rate and review the podcast on iTunes, that'd be much appreciated. You can find it at all of your listening platforms, but iTunes is the only one that helps with the uh, the rates and reviews, so that would help the podcast out, help me out quite a bit. Also, if you like to watch this face for radio, you can go to the Rotoballer YouTube channel, subscribe, like, share the good stuff there for the video version of MLB DFS Quick Hits. Hope everybody had a great weekend, Easter holiday, family, friends, lots of baseball, all the good stuff. It was fun, injuries home runs, you name it, we got it. Lots and lots of good stuff there, but we'll get right to your Monday action. Should be a quickie. Like I said, seven games. Weather appears to be okay on the seven-game slate. Maybe blown out a little in Wrigley. It's blown out in Oakland, but that usually doesn't affect Oakland too much. Big big ballpark. The big story here is pitching's atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. We, we, get, we get Jacob DeGrom, which is nice because of uh, the COVID situations with Washington. Not nice. But we get Jacob DeGrom tonight. Other than that, it's bad. It's really bad. Let's look at the totals on the slate. Mets, Phillies, total of seven. Rays, Red Sox, nine and a half. Brewers, Cubs waiting on that one. Wrigley weather. Astros, Angels, nine. Dodgers, A's, nine. Giants, Padres, eight and a half. White Sox, Mariners, eight and a half. Like I said, Jacob DeGrom's on the bump. He's 10-7, and he is going to be uber popular and for very, very good reasons. We got DeGrom going up with the Mets, um, a Phillies team, which isn't the worst offensively. But this is Jacob frickin' DeGrom. He's going to be super chalky. Do what you wish. Last year, a near 40% strikeout rate. Uh, almost 22% swinging strike rate last year. The dude was just money. Nails. Philly's been pretty good this year. Not going to to act like they're, they're not. Their offense, you know, Hoskins and Harper and Kutch and Segura and Bond. And everything's been great. But uh, it's a tough match. If they have a 2.75 team total, DeGrom's just a beast. If you're playing cash, play DeGrom. If you're playing GPPs, Probably playing DeGrom, but there's an argument to be had. If you're making multiple lineups, be different. Depends on the tournaments you're in. But uh, he's going to be popular and for very good reasons. He's You'd never be shocked if certain pitchers perform well. But on this seven-game DraftKings slate, DeGrom is probably the only one with like 40, 35 to 40 point ceilings. And it's tough because these guys won't go as deep in the games. DeGrom should be able to go 100 pitches. So DeGrom at 10-7. He's the, he's the nuts. If you want to fade him in a, in a tournament, I get it. In cash, you play DeGrom. Just play him. All right. The rest of the pitching, though, plug your nose. Not playing Dustin May. Can't trust the pitch count. Trevor Williams, I don't, I, I'm just not going there. Not at that price point. Adrian Morahone, we can look at 8100 bucks at home against the San Francisco Giants. The big things here for the Gigantes, they have a short sample, obviously. They've hit lefties good this season, and they've hit them well in the past. Um, they have a 3.6 team total, not the highest on the slate, but last year in a small sample sign, Marone, 377 versus lefties, 356 versus righties. Uh, very good this spring. He's got good stuff in that regard. Uh, he had almost a 32, 32% strikeout rate last year. So a lot of that, but also gave a 42% hard contact rate last year. So it's a um, GPP type situation with Morahone. I see the Giants, uh, you know, stackable upside there because most people like to attack the Giants with pitching. At the same time, would anybody, anybody be shocked if the Giants uh, fell on their face? No. So Adrian Morahone at eighty one hundred bucks, I get it. This is how bad the slate is, folks. We have to kind of like make arguments for every little possible thing. Like Frankie Montas, I just don't really feel like fading the Dodgers, but I get it if you want to go there. I'm not. I'd, I'd rather I'd rather gamble with uh, Adrian Morahone than Montas. Uh, farther down the list, though, Jose Quintana, seventy four hundred bucks at home. Against the Houston Astros, another scary situation. Houston, we know, can be uh, sneaky at times, <laughs> and they, they've actually started swinging that good in Oakland to start the season. Team total about four point four last season. Quintana lefties four sixty three, righties two seventy. That could bode well outside of Jordan uh, Alvarez and Kyle Tucker. And if Michael Brantley's back in the lineup, that'll be something to keep an eye on as well. Lots of righties in this Astros lineup. So if, uh, Quintana continues with the reverse splits, which he has most of his long veteran career. That could be a sneaky angle to approach here. At the same time, we've seen Quintana be dog poop in recent years also. So pick your poison on that one. When you're looking at one Jose Quintana, it's um, it's not great, but a near 30% K rate last year. 
uh, 50% hard contact rate last year. Not good either. But one thing that that really stood out with Quintana, his his uh, spring training numbers were outstanding. He's very, very good. Strikeouts were up. So at 7400 bucks, he checks the box of someone I'm going to circle back on uh, as the lineups come out, as the day goes on, see what happens. Uh, Michael Walker is another one at $7,200. He's looked well. The only concern I have here is Tampa Bay is going to really, like with the archers, the Walkas, these older veteran pitchers that have shown to be good. Walker was actually decent with the Cardinals uh, last year. Not great, but decent. They're going to Tampa Bay is going to manipulate his innings. They're going to use him just enough, get him out, use their bullpen. It's not going to be a strict opener situation, but it could be. If he's dealing, he could go five. If he's not, it's like three to four. It's tough to tell, but at 7200 bucks against Boston, he's going to play as a sneaky GPP-type option. Below 7K is where it gets fun. You can take a little more chances down here. I think Nick Pavetta at 69 against Tampa Bay, a Tampa Bay offense that really has struggled to get things going this season. Um, over the weekend in Game 3 against the Marlins, they finally kind of woke up, but it, it was a rough go. So Pavetta, we've seen the velocity up towards the end of last season looked, looked better, looked okay in spring. Strikeouts could be there against Tampa Bay at $6,900. Someone to keep an eye on. Carlos Rodon, a guy we've wanted to see healthy forever, goes up to Seattle. Um, Seattle can hit lefties. We've seen that. But at the same time, lots and lots of swing and miss. we got Carlos Rodon, who we've been waiting to stay healthy. This spring has been healthy. His velocity is up. He's striking guys out. He looks outstanding. That's what earned him a, st- a spot in this rotation with the Chicago White Sox. Now, does it carry over in Seattle? We'll see. But for $6,700 in a matchup against the Mariners, I'm willing to give it a look. Uh, if the strikeouts are there, it's cut, it starts to come back. If the price goes down, give up a few runs. But give me five, six innings. Give me six-plus strikeouts. We can make it work. Give me a quality start with like five or six-plus strikeouts. We're in. Mariners have a team total of four. Um, lefties and righties hit Rodon a ton last year. Super small sample because he was hurt. But it's an intriguing play with Rodon at 6700 A one I'll be willing to take a look at at that price point. And then the last one I will mention, and it's kind of a cross your fingers play, but Matt Moore at sixty four hundred bucks. We know spent a lot of time. Uh, he spent overseas last year, over in uh, I believe it was Japan last year. Was it Japan or China last year? He was good. Comes on back, decent spring with Philadelphia. Makes a starting rotation. Sixty four hundred bucks against a Mets team that spent all weekend waiting to see if they were playing baseball. Do you want to play that angle at sixty four hundred bucks? I don't hate it. I think it's worth a worth a look. Like, where's the Mets head at? Where the, what practicing have they been able to do? They have a team total of four point two five. They are going up against Jacob Degrom, so that's tough for for more in that situation. At sixty four hundred dollars, I can see the appeal. So basically, as you can tell, I am not usually I have like two, three, four hit pitchers. I'm like, we are rolling with these tonight. That we just don't have that on the slate. It's just not there. It's it's not existent. Jacob Degrom at ten seven. That's the one. But that you don't need to listen to the show for that. That's pretty simple stuff. But then you got more home. You got Waka. You got Pavetta. You got more. You got Quintana. You got Rodon. If I had to narrow it down right now, as I record this podcast, Quintana, Rodon, those are the two I'd be going with with the Grom, with more home a close four. But you can make arguments for all of them. So I think with the Quintana Rodon, part of their appeal, cheap. Let's just see what happens. Like let's let's try to get like. Let's try to save as much money and get all the bats because there are bats for days. Speaking of the bats, let's get at it again. Seven games, lots of bad pitching, lots of hitters in play tonight. Uh, we'll kick it off at the catcher's position where I prefer not to pay up, but there's a lot of good pay up spots in this one. Uh, Christian Vasquez at 4800 bucks with Michael Waka stands out as a decent one, but let's save some cash. Let's save some cash to the catcher's position. We're going to save some cash to the pitcher position. And we're going to go. Um, Maybe James McCann at 37 versus lefty. We know McCann hits lefties very, very well. Same with Buster Posey at 3800 bucks. If you aren't using Mara Hone, Posey two home runs to start the season, 3800 bucks. Says he feels healthy, he looks healthy. I don't mind those two, Posey and McCann at 38 and 37, respectively, instead of paying all the way up at the position. Vic Caratini, 3300 bucks versus Disclafani. He stands out as another option in this one. One of the popular options up to 3K now after just crushing everything over the weekend. Yermin Mercedes, $3,000 against Justice Sheffield. He's still very well priced if this is the actual bat we get to see. Like 3000 3, against Justice Sheffield is worth a peak on this one. Other than that, check the lineups. You might get a couple cheapies, but Posey, McCann, Caratini, Mercedes, 
Those are options in the 3K range you can definitely build around on this slate. First base position, we love a Brave versus lefties, 56 hundo. Nothing to worry about there. We're looking at um, Sheffield last season in his uh, small season sample. Lefties hit 192, righties hit 315 off of Justice Sheffield. So Jose Abreu and a White Sox team that loves hitting lefties is $5,600. So keep him on your radar. Uh, Hosmer started off the season well. He's up to 5,200. A little pricey for Hosmer. Still very much in play on this slate. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Let's go below 5K, though, and see if we can save some cash. See if Shohei Otani's back in the lineup. Took a nasty spill at home plate. They say general, general soreness. We'll wait and see. But if he is in the lineup, 4,500, very much a play first base outfield eligible for Mr. Otani. A few other guys to keep a look at. If Jared Walsh was in the lineup, first base outfield, he's 3,900 bucks. Great price point. First Garcia of Houston. Uh, Walsh hit two. He double donged on Sunday night, including the walk off three run blast. Big stuff from him. Lefties at 410, righties 300 off Luis Garcia last season. Jared Walsh, 3,900 bucks. Phenomenal price point. First base outfield. Eligible, someone to definitely remember at and definitely at his price point, let alone just the overall situation. That he's first base outfield, also. Lots of positional flexibility comes into play, especially on these very large offensive evenings like Ty France, first base, second base. He's 3,800 versus Rodon, who we know we can attack with lefties and righties, preferably righties, but you can do with both. France at 38, I like as well. Uh, Yuli Guriel loves hitting lefties. Quintana, not your really gas canny lefty, but not great. So Gurriel at 37, especially if you're stacking Houston, good cheaper piece of the stack. Uh, Cronenworth, first base, second base for San Diego at 34. I prefer him at second base, but if you need him at first base, 3400 bucks. Good cash game play. Nice piece of a Padre stack. Usually it can fit their six. So you can get with Willie Myers, Hosmer, stuff like that. Don't mind Crone at, Cronenworth at 3400 Your other cheap pieces of the pie, and early in the season, the pricing has been all messed up, so you really need to look all the way down. If you're going on a deep Seattle stack for a throw on, Evan White's 26 hundo. Don't hate that. Andrew Vaughn has yet to wake up. He's 2,500 bucks. The wake up will happen. If you want to wait and see, I get it. If you want to keep jumping on ways cheap, I get that too. But um, I'm not I'm not saying run to play him. I love him when he's 2K. 2,500 bucks, still a great price point. If you're stacking Chicago, makes sense. Probably not so much a one off. Um, and again, Evan White, 26 if you're stacking there. But that'll do it at the first base position. Second base, Jose Altuve at 5,200 bucks. I'll probably pass. Um, don't mind him in a stack, but I think there's other options cheaper that you can uh, exploit in this situation. Like a Gavin Lux at 4K, he was leading off the other day and hitting towards the top. And he's also hitting six. If he's towards the top, great play. Down in the order, if you're doing a weird Dodger stack to kind of get away from the chalky Dodger stack, still not bad at 4K. But like Ty France at 38, probably rather have. Colton Wong at 37, his OBP skills, decent in cash. Piece of a Milwaukee stack, I get it at that price point. Uh, don't mind that at all. Cheaper plays, Marwin Gonzalez has actually had a big week and stole some bags, scored some runs. He's 35 hundo. If you're stacking Boston, he'll basically go unowned. So a guy to keep an eye on. And that mentioned Jake Cronenworth at 34. I think it's just a great cash game play with Cronenworth at that price point and a part of Padre stacks. It's really, really strong on his look. If Donovan Solano cracks the Giants lineup, continues to hit, continues to get underappreciated, 3200 bucks against the lefty Mor- Morahone. Um, I like Solano a lot in that one at 3,200. If he's in the lineup, that's where you could play a Cronenworth at first or a, a France at first and play Solano at second and save some cash if you need to. You're probably not going to need to. You maybe leave money on the table. Maybe you just do that because the pitching is so bad, you shouldn't need to save too much money. Um, after Solano, though, you know, if Jorge Pateo, yeah, probably not going there tonight. If he cracks the lineup, you could, but not leaning, not excited to go there, um, but that's about it at the second base position. Third base, we keep it going. Machado, 5,600, good piece of a Padre stack. Not so much a one-off stack, though. Bregman as well at 55. Both stack pieces. I'll save some cash on one-offs, but both good stack pieces. Uh, Rafael Devers, not great first two games. Got game three off. Hopefully he comes back. Michael Walker, 5,200 bucks like that quite a bit. Chris Bryant, swinging a decent battle. We're looking at 5,100 to Cubbies. Um, they woke up a bit on Sunday. You got uh, Anderson, the lefty. We got some good Cubs against lefties when potentially blowing out in Wrigley. Keep an eye on that. So Chris Bryant at 51, I don't hate in this, uh, in this matchup. If you're going to stack some Cubs, especially a few others to look at tonight. Moncada, but ice cold, but never give up on Moncada and stacks. He's going to get going 
eventually. Um, a few others. Uh, Aladimus Diaz, third base outfit eligible. He's 3900 bucks. Usually in the left lineups versus lefties, hits lefties well. So if you're stacking Houston, Aladimus Diaz in play. Evan Longoria versus lefty at 3800 Like that quite a bit as well. For the Gigantes against Adrian Marhone. Farther down at the third base position, Alec Baum is 3K versus DeGrom. Only if you're feeling frisky. He hits cleanup. He's too tre- cheap for that price. When he's 2900 bucks on Sunday. I think he stole a bag, scored a run, drove in some runs, whatever. Uh, he's he's too cheap, but it is a very tough matchup. So don't fool yourself completely on that one. And that should do it at third base. Let's go to the short stop position. Tatis at 58 in your stacks. Corey Seager, solid cash game play pretty much every single day at 56. There's only a few guys I'm always willing to pay up for in cash. When the matchup's right, which is like 80% of the time for the Dodgers, if not more, Seager, he fits the mold. 5,600 bucks. Good cash game play. Javi Baez at 52, good piece of a Chicago stack. If I'm paying up like for one-offs, I want Seager, maybe some Bogarts. But uh, otherwise, I want Baez in a stack. And then Tim Anderson at 51. Loves his lefties. A little banged up. Make sure he's in the lineup. But he's a great piece to go with, like your Abreu's and company with the Chicago White Sox. Going below 5K, though, um, you can save some cash. Like, you're pretty much going up top, or you're going to just drop down to the low threes into the the twos even on this one. Like, I'm not even looking. Like, the threes, there's a couple guys, but nothing that excites me too much. There's really nothing in this. You might be paying up a shortstop. You might be as we slide on down. Yeah, you're paying up a shortstop. Unless something comes up in a lineup, you're paying up the shortstop position. There's nothing out below. Like Lindor versus, versus Moore could be good. He hits with good power from the right side of the plate. I'm not going di- to deny that. He's 48 hundo. So let me re- reset it. Below Lindor, there's not a ton I like. So Lindor and above, you got a few plays. So you're paying up a shortstop tonight unless something really strange comes out in the lineup. Outfield position, there'll be tons and tons of outfielder with no pitching involved tonight. Like you, Trout at 57 is a great play. I'm not going to deny that. You got your Dodgers. Yelich, especially if the wind's blowing against Williams at 55, I like that quite a bit. Uh, Lou Bob, if you're stacking the White Sox, he's 53. He started out the year very well. Will Myers swinging a hot bat to start the year. Most people only target him versus lefties. Love him in your San Diego stacks with a righty on the mound. Really like him there because he, I think he gets overlooked. Eventually, Rose Rain is going to get going. Like, there's so many good plays right here. So many good plays in the outfield. But if I'm going the 5K and above, and I got to narrow it down for it. Like, Will Myers is sneaky. Lou Bob, very good. Christian Yellick as well. Then Trout's Trout. In the 4K range in the outfield, JD Martinez smoking hot to start the year. We prefer him versus lefties, but he's hitting everybody right now. He's 47 hundo. Mentioned Shohei Otani earlier. Austin Meadows versus Pavetta. I like at 4,400. Meadows is a couple dongs to start the season. Good spot there versus Pavetta at 44. Bottom 4K, if you want to get frisky with Kyle Tucker at 41, you could look at that. Quintana's got those reverse splits going on. Could be a nice GPP play with Kyle Tucker. Going below 4K, well, you got Mark Conn at 4K, but probably past tonight. Go below 4K here. You got a few more to take. You got Jared Walsh, mentioned him at 39. I love that price point. Love it a lot. Manny Margot, depending on where he's at in the lineup, if you're stacking at 38, does bring some value back. Jackie Bradley Jr. went deep on Sunday. He's 37 in a nice piece there. Tommy Pham, if you're stacking, don't hate it completely. A few other ones. I mentioned Marvin Gonzalez earlier as a value play. Jay Up, Justin Upton at 34 if you're stacking the Angels. People are going to go to the lefties versus Garcia, rightfully so. Jay Up at 34, nice piece to bring it back. Love, 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 and most people should if they're paying attention at home. Austin Slater at 3300 bucks versus Adrian Morhone. Criminal. Criminal price point. Should be hitting towards the top, if not leading off for the Giants. Hitting the ball great. Hitting lefties really well last year, already this year. So Slater at 33. Great part, great price point in this one. Another great price point. Mitch Hanniger went deep on Sunday or Saturday. Sorry, they didn't play Sunday. Saturday. Mitch Hanniger at 30, uh, 3200 bucks versus Rodon. Good value for you in that one. We hit 3K and below now. And it gets uh, dicey, but there's been a lot of value so far to start the season. So let's not try to miss any here and scan on through. Taylor Trammell at 27. Probably not going lefty-lefty there, but something to keep an eye on for sure. A few others down below here. I mentioned Andrew Vaughn. He's 2,500. Not in love with that play. Uh, Let's see what else we got. I know there's a few. I'm trying to see where they're at. You can definitely take advantage of. In this, because there's a lot of injuries that took place on Sunday to monitor as well. 
but nothing standing out like I thought it would here. But I know when lineups come out, there's going to be a few. Uh, yes, Chaz McCormick of the Houston Astros went deep on Sunday. If Brantley's banged up, he should still be starting. He's $2,000, the minimum. Chaz McCormick, one to keep an eye on there. Other than that, there's really nothing down there. There must be on the guys that are playing earlier in the day that are usually cheap on this slate. All right, recapping the pitching on the slate. Jacob DeGrom, yes, play him. If you can play him twice, that'd be great, but you can't. Uh, otherwise, you got Marhong, Waka, Pavetta, Moore, Quintana, Rodon. If I got to narrow it down, it could be Quintana and Rodon to go with DeGrom. But let's see how things uh, change, check out tomorrow with lineups and whatnot. Follow me in the Slack chats. I'll help you out there. In the Lion Star chats, wherever. Just come find me. I'll help you out where I can. That's where I lean on those ones. When we're talking stacking it up on this Monday, April 5th slate, Milwaukee, Chicago, I like quite a bit with Anderson and Williams on the mound. Potential wind blowing out there in Wrigley. Giants, Padres, I think it's sneaky. Uh, Morahone's good. How long does he go? Padres' bullpen's not bad either. So it's, it's interesting with the Giants have been hitting lefties really well even last year and already to start this season. I think they get overlooked in this one. So GPP, the Giants, Padres are always in play. So I think you can bring it back with some Padres if you want to game stack it. It's not the worst thing. Love the White Sox versus the lefty. And I like Justice Sheffield, but I like the White Sox versus the lefty. And I like the Angels a lot versus um, Garcia as well. Jared Walsh with $3,900. Very, very cheap. You got Upton. You got Trout, of course. You got Otani. There's going to be some other angles to go with. Rendon. Everyone, we always forget about Rendon. Angel, angels are very intriguing, but there's a lot of arguments to be made. Lots of value to be had. Jacob DeGrom, start building from there. That's the best I can say. It, it's, it sucks. But that's, that's, that's where we're at. The good thing, when pitching is this bad, that means we're like a day or two away from the Aces. So Tuesday, Wednesday, expect some big-time pitching, some fun decisions to be made there, some interesting stacks, all that good stuff. But for now, follow me on Twitter, at BDNJIC. Rate and review MLB DFS Quick Hits on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. If you want to watch the video, go to the Roto Baller YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, share, all the goodies there. But no, until next time, this was MLB DFS Quick Hits, your Monday, April 5th edition.